Okay, recording started. Okay, so hi everyone, I'm V and I'm the intern for the Center of Excellence for Health and today is our last sessions of long-term care week. And uh, today we have Danielle Kent. She is currently the research coordinator um, and manages the research department at Loch Lomond Villa in St. John. Danielle holds a Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology from Dalhousie University and a Master in Applied Health Services and Research from the University of New Brunswick. And to get started, I'll pass it over to Danielle and she's going to take you on this career pathway in research coordinating. And Perfect. on to you. Thank you, V. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for inviting me to speak at the Center for Excellence's Long-Term Care Week Speaker Series. So as V mentioned, my name is Danielle Kent, and I am the Research Coordinator at Loch Lomond Villa. So, so I'm just going to skip this because I don't think anyone's here just yet. So a little bit about me. Uh, I found this slide really hard to prepare because it feels like a long time ago that I was actually 15 years old, but in fact, it was only 10 years ago. So I am 25 years old and I just recently entered the workforce. Um, I, I did think back to when I was 15 years old. I was quite studious and I remember that I was training for the Canada Games for sprint kayak. I unfortunately I didn't have a picture of me when I was 15. Uh, when I actually went to the Canada Games, uh, but the photo I did include was was me when I was Team MB's head coach for the kayaking team the following year. So what I found was training and keeping up high marks involved a lot of hard work and dedication, uh, but I did have plenty of strong role models supporting me throughout the way. Some of those mentors were my kayaking coach, my strength and conditioning coach, the teachers, uh, as they often gave me life advice and different ideas for career options. I remember at the time when I was 15, I remember doing a physiotherapy placement through my high school, which was Wasse High, and I really thought I wanted to be a physiotherapist or physician. So moving ahead to today, my hobbies still revolve around sports and physical activity, such as going to the gym, skiing, I like to downhill ski and cross country ski, biking uh, and paddling sports. So I included a couple photos just to give you a sense of who I am. So I included a photo of me at Sunday River uh, and then, of course, a photo of me biking um, uptown St. John. So where my high vis so that uh, cars can see me and also on the weekends really like to to make lattes and whatnot. Um, but I but I do find that sport and physical activity are an important part of my life. I find that they keep me pal balanced, which translates to my work. Sport is a form of relaxation and meditation for me, and I find it helps me to concentrate better, plan ahead, pay attention to little details, stay motivated, and persevere, especially when um, when you can get tired. Uh, all the important qualities for research. So as V mentioned, um, I, I do have my bachelor's and my master's. So I did my post-secondary education through Dalhousie University. I remember way back when I was in grade 12, I did bounce around from program to program before I actually found kinesiology. So I remember my grade 12 year, I started off in health promotions, uh, quite, accept, quite excited to get that acceptance letter, and then I switched to general sciences, and then I decided that pre-med was the way to go. In my second year of the pre-med program, I did a couple of kinesiology courses and I realized that um, I was really passionate in that field. So in my second year, I, I switched my programs to a Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology. And fortunately, I was still able to graduate in, in four years. After I finished my Bachelor of Science in Kin, I immediately went off to grad school at the University of New Brunswick in Fredericton, and I did a thesis-based master's in applied health services and research. Um, there's kind of two routes you can do with master's, usually a course base or a thesis base. Um, thesis base, I, I got to write uh, great big 
thesis, so 100 pages, and defend it in front of a bunch of profs. Uh, course base um, is a little bit different where you don't necessarily have to do those uh, research projects. But I will say thesis based masters are very challenging. It does feel like a marathon, uh, but it was one of my greatest accomplishments. I remember um, finishing up the masters and walking across the stage was one of the proudest moments that I've had so far to date. So I don't, I'm going to skip this one, but food for thought, what post-secondary programs are you interested in? So career portfolio. So I have been part of the research world for about four years now. I started with projects that examined behavior changes. So for example, um, maybe people who are starting to become physically active, how can that cascade to other aspects of your life? So maybe you're sleeping better, you're eating better, different things like that, or vice versa. Maybe you're becoming physically inactive and how does that affect your sleep, your eating um, and, and different health behaviors as well? The other um, area of research that I was starting to look at was our homeless population and precarious housing in New Brunswick and across the country. But over the last couple of years, my main area of, of research has been older adults in the community and long-term care. At the start, I said I really wanted to be a physician or physiotherapist, uh, but when I made that switch from the pre-med program to kinesiology, I really realized that I wanted to make a difference with more so preventative health um, and make a difference at the community and population level instead of more so working one-on-one -on -one with clients or helping with um, acute problems. So still my career portfolio. Um, so I do work at Loch Lomond Villa, as V mentioned at the start, and I am a research coordinator. So this does include managing the research department, and I sit on the organization's leadership team. You might ask, well, what is Loch Lomond Villa? So if anyone's from St. John, it's just in the east side, and this is a long-term care facility that's actually two buildings. So there's two campuses, and they're right across the street from, from one another. So together, the nursing homes have 190 beds. Uh, there are three high-rise buildings for over 300 older adults and an 18-bed special care home. So it is quite a huge facility, and we actually have over 350 staff that work at the villa and village in various different jobs in order to, um, to run our facilities. And our mission at the villa is that our home is to provide a caring living environment for adults in need of support. And our values are being an inclusive, resident-centered community that encourages dreams, friendships, and living with purpose. I do find it's a great place to work. It's, um, it's very rewarding working in long-term care because you're able to build relationships with residents and tenants in the facility. So when you're walking down the hallway, you're often running into a lot of, um, a lot of friends and you're able to have um, nice conversations with people. And two, uh, staff are very caring in long-term care, so everyone is very supportive in the workplace. Um, so, of course, today I am focusing on my position as a as a research coordinator in my department, uh, but I do want to put it out there that there are a whole lot of career options as well, such as being a care staff. So we have personal support workers at Loch Lomond Villa, LPNs and RNs. Um, on top of that, we have a whole dietary department. So we have chefs, we have people who are serving residents. Um, people who are cleaning up, we have laundry, we have environmental services, maintenance, we have a recreation department, so we have recreational therapists, um, we have uh, like a spiritual coordinator, and I'm probably missing a couple other roles as well, but lots of opportunities in long-term care. Um, and as well for high school students or university students, we have plenty of opportunities to volunteer and positions for co-op if anyone's in the St. John region and you're, you're starting to think, hmm, where am I going to do my co-op? Okay, so another food for thought. 
what do you think long term or what do you think research in long term care is? So in the next couple slides, hopefully I'll I'll answer this question and give you a sense of what research actually looks like in long term care when I talk a little bit about my work experience. Um, as well as um, examples of research projects that we do at Lachlan and Villa. So work experience, there's a, a photo of me up a uh, top right corner. That's myself in, um, in, in Baltimore in the States at a conference, the Plain Tree Conference for Radiography on Wheels. And down below Radiography on Wheels are X-ray technologists. So that's him actually working with a resident. I'm actually going to talk about that um, project in the next slide. So work experience. So day to day, I do have many responsibilities in my position. So for me, the grant finding, the writing and reporting, that's a huge part of my job. So I'm the one who has to be always um, on the lookout with, for looking for grant opportunities for research projects and potentially collaborating with other organizations to bring these uh, projects to light. Uh, writing the grants as well. So usually I would do the drafts and I would, again, collaborate with others to um to perfect those and if we are successful then the communication usually goes to the research coordinator for uh any reports and whatnot that um are part of the the grant agreement i also have a team that i manage and oftentimes in a role like mine we do juggle multiple projects at a time so again you'll kind of see in the next slide a few of them uh, that we're working on I also ensure that the ethics is being upheld. So in research, ethics is a huge part uh, of research, making sure that um, we're not doing harm with the projects that we're doing, especially when we're working um, with people. And budget review, huge one too. With grants, we want to be precise with our budgets. So I'm always reviewing them to make sure that we're not under budget or over budget with our projects. I also oversee the day-to-day -day collection and analysis of data. So typically we have a research assistant who will do the data collection analysis, and I'll be confirming that it's being done properly, it's being stored properly, uh, and that there's no issues with our data collection or ana analysis. For those who might be interested, computer work, that's a huge part of my, of my day. I do work independently on my computer most of the time. Uh, it's kind of dependent on the day. Some days I'm, I'm working independently for four to six hours, whereas other days, such as yesterday, uh, I was in meetings for eight hours. So it kind of just depends on the day for me. But there is a lot of independent work, lots of deadlines for research. Um, which is which is really helpful to have deadlines. I also help with knowledge transfer and dissemination. I'm sure a lot of um, high school students have never heard these terms before, but I like to kind of compare this to the marketing aspect of research projects. So sharing results with the right people, typically call those stakeholders. Um, so this might be in the form of presentations like I'm doing today um writing reports publishing manuscripts different things like that to get the information out to the right people uh, that need to need to know it or who might who might like to know the information so i do have to say my favorite part of my job is sharing information on projects i actually really enjoy giving presentations uh, and i really like to see the impact that projects can make for our community and at a provincial level as well I think that's quite exciting when you get to work so hard on projects um, and you can actually see the direct impact on your communities. Um, if I think about the hardest part of my job, uh, typically in, in school and in university, we don't necessarily learn the soft skills. So I, I find sometimes uh, conflict resolution can be uh, a challenge or the so soft skills associated with managing people. That can be a little bit, uh, bit of a challenge. So some examples of research projects that we have done at Lachlan and Villa. So I included a few uh, photos here and actually the, the bottom one and the photo 
in the top right are actually snippets from CBC articles that have been um, made, made available on CBC with our projects. So New Brunswick, uh, I don't know if everyone knows this, but we actually have the highest proportion of aging adults compared to the rest of Canada. So we do have a ton of research initi initiatives for our aging population. Uh, I have included a few examples and we'll dive right into them of collaborations and research projects at the villa, just to give you a sense of research and aging um, and, and the impact for community and long-term care. These ones mainly focus on long-term care, but we do have community-based projects as well. So in the top left photo, this is a photo of the UMB simulation lab. So this lab is actually part of Loch Lomond Villa. So we've transformed part of our auditorium into a simulation lab. And what it includes are two resident rooms, a shared bathroom, and they're basically identical to what you would see in the or whatnot. So you can see in one way, but you can't see out the other one. So on the other side of that, that mirrored glass is, um, is kind of our like simulation lab where all the research happens back there. But I wanted to give this example because uh, this was um, quite a successful initiative between the University of New Brunswick and Loch Lomond Villa to provide research in infection control practices for our province. Uh, and really, this is a state of the art simulation lab who and it has like high functioning mannequins and everything. And it's also able to provide hands on experience to our nursing students, care staff and family members as well. So it's uh, it's really exciting. Um, it even has a, um, a tub in one of the rooms, too. So it's a great, great way to to learn more uh, about caring for for uh, residents before you actually uh, work with with real residents. So I also included a photo of radiography on wheels. So in the in the last one slide you kind of saw a photo of me with the the poster and uh, Todd working with the residents so this is um so the reason why we came up with this idea was because in nursing homes residents are often sent to to the hospital if they need an x-ray and this is usually done by ambulance so it is quite quite expensive it fills up our ERs and as we all know our healthcare system is already overwhelmed so we really want to reduce the the number of transportation of residents to hospital but we also want to be able to provide the highest quality of care so my boss actually came up with the idea of radiography on wheels and this project we that we're piloting for the province is that we're actually bringing a mobile x-ray unit to long-term care facilities so nursing homes special care homes and we're able to bring this mobile x-ray unit directly into residents rooms and um, they're able to do the imaging there and just send it off to the hospital and the residents can remain in, in their home the entire time. And just the last um, example of a research project, this one is called MedReviewRx. So this project, um, this is more just to show the partnerships that we have. So this, the, the project lead for this one is actually York Care Center and they have a research department called CIRA. So it's a Center for Aging and Research in Innovation or something like that. <laughs> I'm going to mess it up a little bit. Um, but I want to show this example of partnering sites uh, because we often um, love to partner with other organizations to see their projects come to light. Um, so the purpose of this one was to look at medication use by residents. So what we would do is actually upload medications that residents were on into an app and we would also include any conditions that uh, the resident might have had at all. And that app would actually be able to create a report and and that was provided to medical teams and would let them know if there were any medications that were harmful or no longer required for residents. So a really cool um, app and it was really cool to be able to partner with Sierra uh, to to see this project come to light. So just a couple of ex or a few examples of research projects that we've done here uh, and, and we've done many many other one um, many many other research projects as well. 
So career paths. So this was uh, this is a little bit of a tricky slide for me to do as well. But when I thought about it for me as a research co coordinator and my position at the villa, this is kind of the, the ceiling for my position um, at the villa with my education. But my education would allow me to move around in long term care. So, for example, there might be opportunities to, for me to work in social development or the health department uh, in government. Or another option for me could be furthering my education where I only have my master's. I could consider getting my PhD and this would allow me to be pro a project lead for other research projects, uh, especially in long term care. Uh, I will say more education is always helpful. Having a master's degree has opened a lot of doors for me in my career in different sectors. So as I kind of mentioned before, I've been able to float around in different fields. Um, and it's also opened the door to a lot of manager positions and has expedited my career progression. Um, I find having a master's for me, I was able to walk into a research coordinator position um, as well on a leadership committee. Whereas for other people, if, if you just have your undergrad, you might uh, need five years of experience, but with a master's, you can kind of walk into some different careers as well. So career advice. So one of my final slides here. So I think my advice is to stay open minded to different opportunities that might be presented to you. As I mentioned, I wanted to be some, something completely different from a researcher, and I, I really didn't know that much about um, being a researcher before entering the field. I, I think I always thought you had to be a genius to be in this uh, in this area, but um, I did stay open minded. And I really enjoy being a research coordinator and working in long term care. Uh, working hard young, my second piece of advice. So two degrees back to back was very challenging. Seven years in school um, at uh, in post secondary is uh, is very challenging, but it was worth the hard work. I know COVID uh, was quite challenging. Uh, I did my master's during the COVID pandemic. That was that was really hard, but I do encourage everyone to work hard and follow what you're interested in as well. Potentially looking at career options, too. So if you do certain degree um, programs, just looking at what job opportunities are available afterwards and how many jobs are actually available in that field afterwards, too, because you do want to uh, be able to enter the work workforce immediately after school because it is really expensive to be in post-secondary. So hopefully after listening to my presentation, I hope you have a sense of what research is and what my job entails. If you like to problem solve, you're curious, innovative, and a hard worker, uh, then, then research might be a career for you. Oops. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Danielle. That was wonderful. And I'll just and flip. V, do you want me to stop sharing? Um, you can leave it there too. That's okay for like uh, students who rewatch it and can take notes. But okay. uh, I just have a few questions that I know like some students might um, might have. So for uh, you mentioned like co-op programs at the villa, is there opportunities for students to kind of uh, participate um, here and there in the research projects you have going on in the villa? Yeah, so we're always looking for um, volunteers. We actually have a volunteer coordinator at the villa and uh, she's she's very easy to talk to and reach out to. And there's just a few forms uh, that you would need to fill out. But if research is something that you're interested in, she would be able to um, to to make that connection uh, for, for the student as well. And lots of co-op opportunities as well in uh, in the summer months with like seed students and whatnot. Awesome. And um, is there uh, any part of your education, whether it's from high school or uh, post-secondary that you think would contribute like the most to your success in your career today? Uh, I think um, one of the biggest things for me 
with with my career path is uh, deadlines are a huge a huge part of my job and uh, staying self self motivated so there's there's usually not someone who's saying to now like you gotta you gotta get this done it's it's myself doing that so I think in high school my undergrad especially my master's setting self deadlines for myself and trying to reach them was a huge uh, was huge for me and I think that's made me really successful today. Awesome, thank you. Um, so I just want to make the closing statement here. So really, again, really, really um, grateful that Danielle is able to um, give us a presentation on her career today. I'm sure it's going to be super, super helpful to all of the students and the teachers that are looking into navigating your future career pathways. And if students are ever interested in pursuing a co-op in long-term care, they can definitely reach out to the Center of Excellence for Health or uh, at the villa there to kind of um, see what's out there for them uh, after they graduate or during a summer where they're interested in doing a co-op. And uh, Danielle, do you have anything you want to say? No, just thank you so much for having me here today. And uh, if anyone's ever interested in research or opportunities at the villa, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to take a call or answer an email. Awesome. So thanks again. And I'll just stop the recording right here.